Hi boys and girls, I'm Rosemary. And today we're gonna to be painting this cute little bunny. He's um, done in gray and white and some little flowers on him. This is just a suggestion. And if you wanna change anything about it, that's up to you. But I would like you to start out with the basic colors first and then any designs that you wanna do, you can be creative and do whatever you would like, okay? so. I always like to, I call base coat the entire piece in one color. It makes it easier uh, to make sure that you don't have any white spots showing because you know, this is what you have. This is how he begins. And if you notice, I don't have any of those white spots showing. Even the white that's on the bunny is done on top of the base coat of the gray. So I'm gonna paint along with you. And the first thing we're gonna do is get your brushes out and you have your strip of paint. So you'll be working from that. And we're gonna paint the entire bunny in the gray. Now you can go over the eyes, everybody always asks me that. You can go over where the white is, you can go over the tail, because all those colors are put on top of the gray. So, and it doesn't have to be completely solid coverage, but we wanna make sure that you don't have any white spots showing. So you put a little bit of paint in your brush and you spread it out. Now you don't wanna dip for more paint until you really make sure that all that paint is out of your brush. Nice and smooth, and now I'm running out of paint, so I will dip again. So you don't dip until it's smooth. If, if it's not smooth, <clears throat> excuse me, it won't dry, and it'll you know get all over your hands and make a mess, and that's why you want it to, uh, every brush stroke that you do, you wanna make sure that it's perfectly dry before you dip into another color. Okay, so nice and smooth. I keep going back and smoothing out every brush stroke, overlapping a little to give me a little better coverage. Okay, and I'm going over the eyes because I can go back in and put the white on the eyes later on. Okay, see, nice and smooth. Make sure it's smooth before I dip for more paint. And all your little crevices, just push the color in and then smooth it out. Okay, and like I said, we're gonna be doing that over the entire piece. So, this should take a couple of minutes to do, and you don't have to rush it. I, I work a little faster because I've been doing this for many, many years. And I, you know, but you, you can stop the video and you could just, you know, catch up to me and then put the video back on again. So, and I keep going back over what I did to kind of get a little better coverage because the first coat doesn't seem to really cover enough. So I'll, I'll work further onto my white area. And then if I see I'm a little light where I already did, I kind of backtrack and go over that too. And you could do all one side first. I'm, I'm kind of working around. Most times I usually tell people to start with the bottom underneath, but I didn't today. And I always feel like the bottom should be painted to make sure that your piece is completely done. The bottoms should be done. So you could always start with that first if you want, but. I start it up on the top, doesn't really matter. It's just, you know, how to hold it so you don't get it all over your hands. But you can put your finger into the bottom of him like I just did and hold it like that. And the paint goes pretty far. You don't need a lot of paint. See how, how fast it's dry? If you put it on properly, I can touch it immediately. If you didn't smooth it out enough and it looks wet, don't touch it yet and let it really dry. When the paint looks um, shiny, it's still wet. So I'm almost done. I need to drop more of the gray. have a little bit of the back to do. If you find yourself running out of the gray, because it's hard for me to visualize how much everybody is gonna use, I pretty much have had, haven't had any complaints about the amount of paint I've been giving, but if you find that you don't have enough don't do the tail and don't do the bottom. You could always do that with a different color later on. That'll spread your paint around more. 
Okay, but I, I pretty much did it with like a half a well of paint, and but I have a palette. So you have those little strips. And then if you have extra, just go around and touch up where you think it's light. I know you don't have to worry about his belly area because I'm going to be putting white over it. And I put some white on the tips of his ears and around his snout and on his tail. So I'm just trying to make sure his body has enough gray on it. And his feet, I have a little on his bottom paws. See, I'm a little light here, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to touch up with a little bit more paint. Okay. And I have a water bowl. You all should have a little water bowl and a paper towel, which I forgot to get a paper towel out, but you should have a water bowl and a paper towel. And I'm going to show you how to wash your brushes for those of you who haven't done any classes with me before. Taking care of your brushes is very important because they will last you a long time if you take care of them. Okay, so I'm going to put him down. And you don't want to bang your brushes in the bottom of the bowl because that will spread the hairs open and then they won't keep a nice shape. You have a, a square brush that I gave you and a, and a pointy brush. So you would use the square brush to do the bigger areas. And then swoosh, 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 swoosh. Don't bang, swoosh. And always try to keep the shape of the brush when you're cleaning the brush. So now you have a flat brush. You're going to go like this back and forth to dry it on your paper towel. Okay. I have a round brush, so I'm just going to point it. See how nice the point stays on mine? And you have this other one. And I've been using this over and over for many classes. And this brush keeps a nice point because I kind of swish it in the water when I wash it also and roll it to a point. Okay, but we don't need, we don't need uh, water in that one right now. Okay, so, um, so now you can work with your smaller brush and we could do some pink. We'll do a little, well, you know what? Since we're gonna do the flowers second, let's do the white. We'll go to the white now. We'll go to the white. Okay, so you have the white again. You have it in the palette in the little strip of paints. I have it in the palette. So you're gonna take your flat brush and you're gonna take the white and you're gonna pounce. Now pounce means just like I said, but you don't pounce with the, you have a flat brush. So you're gonna pounce with the side of the brush like this. So you pick up a little bit of white in your brush, very little, just very little, and you're gonna pounce it. See, it's not really painted because you want it to look hairy, like fur, like the bunny has fur. And I'm gonna put some on his belly and that's right here, okay? I'm just gonna pounce it around. And I like to do this two times, but I'm gonna let this dry first and do the other areas with the white, and then I'll go back to it and do it a second time. Okay, so it's a little bit of paint. You could take a little bit of it out of the brush. You don't want a lot. I'm gonna put some on the bottom of the feet. So I'm gonna go up from his paw and flip it up. And you could do that with your flat brush. Flip it up. Okay, flip it up like that. And flip some up from the bottom of his paw up because you flip it kind of flip it up and it gives you like a, a feathered finish instead of a painted line you, you, you kind of feather it so the edge of it looks feathered almost like a feather all right and I'm gonna do that on his ears also if you could see here I have it I have it on the tips of his ears around his ears and I'm gonna feather a little color little drop a little little drop of paint I wipe it out on the paper towel and flip up on the edge of the ear you can go as high as you want. The, you know, they're animals and every animal is has different markings, so it, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm just doing this as a guide. Okay, did you see what I did on that one? See, I feather it up a little bit, take it out, and do the other side. And you're gonna feather it up. It, I, I start with the edge and I flip it, flip the brush up. And when you do this, it's almost like a form of a dry brushing. And when you do this, it uh, is always good to do it two times, but I like to let it dry. So I'll do all the areas I want in the white first. Um, I also put a little bit in his neck area here above his paws. So I just pounce a little bit in there. You could do that with your smaller brush if you'd like, because it's a tiny little area. And then also on his snout around his nose and his mouth, you do a little bit there. And again, just pounce them on there. Almost like where his whiskers would go. You see that? Okay, and then don't forget the tail. The tail needs a nice amount of white, but we won't glob it on. We'll just pounce on one coat. 
I didn't really wipe my brush out on the towel that time because it's a bigger area and I want it to be whiter, but it will stay wet longer. So you just watch, you don't put your hands in it. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do his chest again. Because I want it to be whiter. Now I'm gonna do half of it so that you could see the difference in one coat versus two coats. Now you see on this one side, I did two coats and you see how much whiter it is? That's why the second coat really makes a big difference. Just always make sure your first coat is dry. Okay, and I have a little white in his belly. And I'll, I'll, put, I'll flip up a little bit on the feet again, although the feet aren't too bad and the ears aren't too bad. I don't really have to have a second coat on there. But the tail, I think on the tail, I'll do a second coat. Because I want the tail nice and nice and white. Another thing you could do with the tail, which is kind of cute, if your mom has a little white cotton ball, you could glue that right on the tail and that would look cute too and you wouldn't even have to bother with the white. Okay, so he's, he's got all the white and the, um, and that. Okay, so now I'm gonna swish my brush again in the water, like, like so, don't bang it. Keep the shape of your brush. Wipe it out on your paper towel. Always keep the shape of the brush. However you wipe it, it should be the direction that the brush hairs go in. Okay. And now we're gonna be putting some white in the eyes. So you're gonna take your small brush, and you don't want a lot. You see that little, little, little bit I put in the brush? Because it will never dry. And we're gonna put some white in the eyes. Now you can do the whole circle in the eye in white. Just paint that in in the white, and then we'll put the blue on top of it after so that we have a two-colored eye. Okay, we'll let that dry, and we'll go on to the pink. So I have the whites in his eyes now, and if you see underneath the blue, there's white in the eye. All right. So put the white aside and we'll, I'm gonna work with the pink now because I wanna do his nose. And I'm not gonna do his flowers yet, but I'm gonna do his nose and then I'm gonna go back and do the blue in the eye. Because the dots, when you do the dots, you do them with the back end of the brush, with the handle. And they stay wet for a very long time. So we don't wanna do them when we have other things to do because you will definitely smear them. If you wanna stop the video and do the flowers now, I mean, you can and then you can always go back and do the eye later on. But because I'm working you know, fast, I'm gonna do the eye first so that I don't put my hand in my flowers. So I'm gonna put a little, little drop of blue. Oops, I have to shake mine up. See the big bottles that mine come in? That's how I fill up all your little strips with these big, big, big bottles. If I don't shake them, there was water coming out. Okay. I just need a drop for the eye. So now the same way you did the white, I'm gonna take the blue and do a circle, a small circle on top of the white with the blue. It's a little wet yet, so it's not really drying. Now I go from the arch, which is the top part of the eye, and I work my way down. I'll show you this as soon as I have it done. Okay, you see that? I do a blue starting at the top part, like the arch of the eye, the top part of the eye, and I work it down, not all the way over the white, but like three quarters of the way over the white, so it's smaller than the white. And that's something you're probably gonna need two coats on also. But this is very wet, so I'm probably not gonna have time to do that right now. But in the meantime, I'm gonna do the nose. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of pink while the eyes are drying, and I'm gonna paint his nose. And his nose is like a V, and then there's a little half circle up at the top of it. And I even kind of, once the, you take the, the pink out of the brush, you could just kind of put a little, 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 little bit in his mouth. I don't know if you could see that. I did his nose and I did his mouth. Okay, might be easier to see on this one when it's dry. All right, his nose, and I just put a little bit in his mouth. Okay, so 
Okay, so um, another thing you can do, if you have a black magic marker, you can do the, um, the black. Let me see. If you had a black ultra fine point magic marker, you could do the circle on the eye and the lashes and the lines in his toes and his paws and his forepaws, okay? But if not, you just take your little brush and you put a little bit of black in it, very, very, very little, and roll your brush to a nice point. Whoops, not on this one, he's done already. And you can put little black lines in those little grooves on his toes. There's three of them, okay? And then on his paws, I believe there's also three on his paws. Yep, one. But if you had a, a, an ultra fine point Sharpie, it really works well. You just have to make sure that the paint is dry. But that's just a little tip, something I found recently, that the markers work very well. And for people who can't draw a straight line, the, uh, the marker, the Sharpie, really works very, very, very well. I also put a, um, a little line in his mouth between the white spots I put on there. and then did a couple of dots, almost like they look like whiskers. Okay, see the mouth, see the paws, okay. And while the blue on the eye is drying, unless yours is already dry, you can do a little circle, a little arch on the eye. See the arch that I did on the eye? My blue is a little wet yet, so I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to put the black over it yet. And I'm going to do the other eye. And if the pink doesn't look like it covered enough, you let that dry and you go back to that also. So there's a lot of, a lot of going back and forth. And I put three little lashes up at the top, but that's up to you. Some, some of the boys feel that they don't want lashes, but boys have lashes. Boys have beautiful lashes, not just girls. So I put a couple of lashes at the top. And now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna double check my, my pink. I think I could use a little more pink. And I think the second coat makes such a difference in the color. Yeah, big difference. See the pink on the second coat, you could see the pink much better. Okay, there we go. Now, here's another thing you could do with the black circle. You could pick up the black with the handle of the brush. Now I'm in the palette. You just pick up a little bit of black on your handle and you lay it on the eye. And if you want it a little bigger, just circle it. Use the brush and twirl it around, and that'll give you a nice size black. And it almost gives you a perfect circle, too. Dip again, and put it down. And I always do that touching the top arch also. I don't do it right in the middle of the eye. You can, I mean, everybody's iris pupils, they're usually done in the middle of the eye, but on a ceramic item, I don't find that I like it as much, but that's your piece, you do what you want. But you see that? That's with the handle of the brush, and that's also how you're going to do the flowers, all right? So let's go now and let's do the flowers. Now, I used purple and pink. I, you can use the blue if you don't want the purple. If you don't want flowers, you could do a three dot design. Um, let me shake this up. And since I went out, ran out of wells, I'm gonna use the cap here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna place some purple dots all around the bunny. And that's where my flowers are going to be. Okay, just watch you don't touch the eyes because they're wet. So I'm gonna do one flower there and space them up far apart because I'm, I'm just gonna do those three for now. So I want you to see what I'm doing now. I, I did three dots, all right? Now, to make the flower above the dot, the purple dot that I did, I'm putting two pink dots. You see that? Okay, and then I'm gonna put one right below that. Okay, you see one right below that? Almost like a triangle. 
You, you start with your purple and you do two pink dots above it and one pink dot below it. And then on either side, you'll fill in with a dot and that gives you the flower. So you put a pink in between and a pink in between the other side. And you see what a perfect flower you get? Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Now you could do it with whatever colors you want. And if you don't want the flower, you just do the three dots. You could do three dots of the purple, like a triangle, all right? But now I'm gonna do this again so you can see. Okay, we're gonna do two pink dots above the purple dots. See on the top there now? All right, and then I'm gonna put one pink dot underneath. So it's almost like a triangle. And then I'm gonna fill in on either side there's just enough space to put two dots, and that gives me the flower. Okay? All right, so uh, that's how you can do your flower design all over your whole piece. And another little cute trick I'm gonna show you, which it makes the eye pop, makes the eye stand out a little bit more, is to take a little, little dot of white and put it on top of the black. And if you look at anybody's eyes, you will see a reflection of light. Like, look at your parents, look at your siblings, and you'll see, you'll see a reflection of light. And that's what doing that white dot on the black looks like the reflection of light that you see in an eye. Okay, so there's the bunny. Now, um, if you want to put him outside, you should probably seal him with a paint-on sealer, which is um, something you can buy in Michaels or Amazon has it. And it's a liquid paint-on sealer instead of spraying. If your mom or anyone in your home has spray, they should do it for you because spray can be toxic and it should be done outside. So, um, and you know what? If you keep him in the house, you really don't have to seal him, all right? But if you wanted to shine on him, then you would need the sealer. But the paints won't come off, okay? And they're all non-toxic. Everything is, is safe. And there's our little bunny. Now, I didn't finish him because I just wanted to show you how to do the flowers and... Um, He's pretty close, right? Yeah, pretty close. And now I have a little set. I have a brother and a sister. Okay, so now you could do the flowers with blue. I'll show you, um, I'll show you another one here where I'll do uh, a purple center. Oh, I have a purple center down there. So let's just do a blue flower. So we'll do, and you could do, you know, a couple of different colors. They don't ha all have to be the same. Okay, and there's a, there's a blue flower. And if you don't want a flower, like I was saying, you can just do one, two, three. Just little three dotters around there. And you wouldn't need the flower if you don't want to do a flower. Okay, but I think he's adorable. A little flower on his toe would look cute on his, on his paw. You could do, um, you could put a little circle of the purple I'm gonna use. And then I'm gonna do the pink. Now, I don't have that on my other one because every time I make something, I wind up doing it a little different. See how cute it looks on his paw? Right there on the bottom? Okay. All right. So, I think that's it for this bunny. And I hope you all enjoyed doing the class. And I thank you all so much for, for um, taking the ceramics. And it's something that's been a passion my whole life. And I hope to instill that in some of you. So, thank you to the library for inviting me to teach this class. And on the instructions that I gave you is my email. And what I would really like is, I, I don't get to see your pieces finished. I mean, I'm talking to my computer right now and I get no response. So if you wanna send me a picture of your finished piece, I would love to see them. Okay, so um, enjoy painting. Thank you again and stay safe.